Well, hi everyone. Welcome to the Pattern Breaks Facilitator Series, where I chat with a seasoned creative facilitator, and then they'll take you through a pattern breaking technique for you to do in real time or when you have the time. Thank you so much for joining us. Today's guest is Gary Ware. Hey, Gary. Hi, how's it going? Good. I'm so happy you're on here. I'm very excited to talk to you. Gary is the founder of Breakthrough Play, a corporate, uh, he's a corporate facilitator who uses improv and play, a certified coach. He's had over 14 years experience in the corporate world leading teams. He's also a keynote speaker. He's spoken at World Dom Domination Summit, AMA's Art of Marketing, and, and a TEDx speaker, just to name a few. By night, he's also an improv comedian. And he also wrote a book called Playful Rebellion about maximizing workplace success through the power of play. I first discovered him, I think it was through the Applied Improvisation Network. I'm very excited to get to know Gary. I love his energy and I love what he's doing. And I feel like he really embodies the power of play. And so Gary, welcome. Oh my gosh, what an amazing <laughs> intro. I need to bring you with me anytime yeah. I go somewhere. <laughs> right. As my hype person, I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. I'm just going to ask you a couple questions. What drew you into where you are now facilitating creative process? Well, it, it all started with, uh, so my background's in marketing and communication. Um, and I found that as I was moving up the ranks of my career, I was finding myself having to facilitate more having to lead teams and wanting to get better at public speaking and just overall leadership. Uh, I consulted a mentor. I was like, Hey, what can I do? I've done Toastmasters. Uh, what else is out there? And it was so interesting that mentor said, Hey, take an improv class. And like most people who aren't familiar with <laughs> the art of improv and the impact that it can have um, on teams and individuals, I was like, I'm not, no, I'm not trying to be on Saturday night live. I, I want to be better <laughs> at my job. And they said, trust me. And so I reluctantly signed up uh, here where I live in San Diego. Um, you know, we have a, a local improv scene, signed up for a class and was blown away about one, how much fun it was, um, you know, to just be present in the moment, do these silly games. And I quickly saw the connection between these activities that we were doing and my real world environment. And so that was the start. And then I started bringing these games to my team. And then pretty soon I was known as the improv guy and I was being asked like, hey, do we have a game for this? And then, you know, that led me to uh, find the Applied Improv Network. And then after a uh, series of events, which led me to uh, rethink my, my career, uh, I decided, you know, the thing that I liked most was facilitation. So, uh, you know, I just started to go down that path. Mm. If you were to say, given our audience today, people who are facilitators and they want to bring more creativity or improv into their facilitation, what is something you've discovered or learned that you would feel is most important that could be most helpful? I know this might seem like a no duh moment, but I feel like it's worth mentioning that we are all creative. Coming from my, my background in, in marketing and advertising, there was a department with a capital C, the creative department, where they were like dubbed as the people that had the bright ideas. And it was interesting. Um, you know, I noticed people that weren't in that department, you know, had this thought like, oh, well, I'm, I'm not in the creative team. So, you know, I'm not creative. Um, and as I got into this role of facilitation, I, I came across some research, um, you know, one of which was a study uh, that NASA did where they, you know, followed uh, people from kindergarten up to 18, and they had them do these creative exercises. And they found that at kindergarten, age five, genius levels of creativity. But by 18, the majority of that group, uh, their ability to be creative diminished. Um, and it largely, you know, has to do with, you know, people's thought process. And so I have this belief that we are all creative. Uh, creative is something that we do is not necessarily who we are. And creativity is just problem solving. And we are, we all have solved problems in new and novel ways. Uh, me as a parent, I feel like I'm doing that all the time. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if you think back, you know, to things that you've done, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I've solved problems. I've, you know, I've come up with unique ways of, of dealing with situations. That's creativity. So that's what I want to, you know, first let everyone know. And once you have that unlocked, um, I feel like the sky's the limit. 
Mm -hmm. Just knowing that everyone has a unique way of being creative. Everyone is already infinitely creative, I think is, I'm glad you brought it up because it really does open the doors. A lot of times people will so go, all right, I'm going to go for this, or I'm going to hit something. And then they get any, and they bump into resistance. How do you move through it? Or how would you work with a group to move through it? Or any advice you could give to anyone listening on that? Oh my gosh. I couldn't have asked for a better setup. Uh, <laughs> so so one, as a teaser for, for you watching, I have some activities that we're going to do that will help you with that. Mm. Um, but two, to answer your question, I... I'd like to first start by talking about creativity. Like, again, creativity um, happens when we are in a relaxed state. Um, the neuroscientist says um, creativity happens mostly when we're in the default network um, of our brain. And that happens usually when we're daydreaming, when we're doing something other than thinking of ideas. Um, like you to think back for a moment, like when was the last time you had like an amazing epiphany idea? You probably weren't trying to have that, right? You were, you were probably walking in the shower. You just woke up. You were doing anything other than that. And all of a sudden, oh yeah, this is a great idea. So my advice, um, you know, if you are in this block, this creative block, my advice to you is to stop doing what you're doing. Take a break and do something else. Uh, it can be as simple as, you know what, I'm going to. I'm going to take 10 minutes and just right here in my office, I, I have a window out here and my wife is a birder. So we have this bird sanctuary <laughs> in our backyard. And sometimes I do that. Like when I need a little break and I can't necessarily go far because the moment I open my door, my kids are going to know that I'm available and then they, they ambush me. So I like, I, I stay in my office sometimes and I'll, and I'll just look out the window for five or 10 minutes. Again, not necessarily trying to do anything in particular and just allowing myself to just get lost uh, to daydream. And sometimes that's enough. Sometimes that's enough to just to, um, you know, to shake off the writer's block. And then the other thing is what you mentioned, you know, that voice in her head, uh, a really good friend of mine, her name is Denise Jacob. She wrote a book about our inner critic. And she says that that gremlin in our head that, um, you know, usually is very loud, you know, that says, you oh, can't yeah. do this. So my advice is, is that gremlin sort of taking the wheel? Uh, you know, are, do you have these voices, you know, that are keeping you in this block state because you don't think that you're enough? If that's the case... Follow the advice of um, author Elizabeth Gilbert and say, hey, you know what? That's just fear. Give it a big hug. Say, hey, I appreciate you trying to take care of me. But right now, me and creativity, we got this. Mm -hmm. You can write in the backseat. You cannot hold the map. You cannot take the wheel. Nice. We got this. Nice. Love it. Perfect. Well, on that note, because uh, it sounds like it is a segue, I'm going to go ahead and pop off and I'll let you lead your technique and then I'll see you in a few minutes. All right. All right. Okay. So I have three really fun and really quick activities uh, that are designed for mental, uh, mental agility. When we think about creativity, when we think about thinking on our feet, um, oftentimes we think like, oh yeah, uh, I can just jump into it. But just like push-ups, just like going to the gym, it's something that you need to work on. If you want to be someone that can think creatively on the spot, in a moment's notice, in high-stakes environments, you need to practice. Uh, so this is something that um, I personally do um, quite often. Um, I do with uh, my clients. And so I invite you to play along uh, or save this and come back. Um, if you like it, share it with your clients. Put it in your work. Uh, this first activity um, is, is more of an energizer, and then it's going to get a little bit more complex. Um, you could do the sitting. You could do the standing. Um, and it is called walk, stop, hop, and clap. Uh, I'm going to just uh, imagine that you are sitting, um, and so I'm going to give you the instructions that way. Uh, but if you happen to be uh, in a safe environment where you can walk around, uh, as long as you can hear my voice, you follow the instructions. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I'm going to give you some instructions. So if I say walk, you're just going to walk. And so if you're sitting down, you're just acting like you're walking. If I say stop, you stop. If I say hop, you give a little hop. Or if you're standing, you can actually hop. And if I say clap, you clap. Those are the instructions. Uh, there are going to be, uh, about three rounds. Um, and if you make a mistake, the goal here is to just jump back in as quickly as possible. So, uh, I have some music. Yeah. Uh, silly music that is going to just get us in the mood. And so here we go. Walk. 
Stop. Walk. Clap. Stop. Hop. Hop. Walk. Clap. Stop. All right, cool. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yay. All right, that probably is easy. Again, if you're walking and I say clap, maybe you got caught up a little bit, but I didn't say stop, so you keep walking. Um, we need to make it a little bit more challenging. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix up a little bit. When you hear me say walk, that now means stop. And when you hear me say stop, that means walk. So that's just our first. First sort of mix up, clap is still clap and hop is still hop. Again, if you're moving and I say clap, you clap and then keep moving because I didn't say the command to make you um, pause. So here we go. Walk. Huh. Did I get you? All right, probably not. All right, here we go. Stop. Clap. Hop. Stop. Ah, you should still be walking. <laughs> okay, walk. All right. You're starting to get the picture. It you're you're making some mistakes is all good. The whole point is that we're getting outside of our head. I'm gonna make the very very last sort of mix up and hop is gonna mean clap, clap is gonna mean hop. So all of the commands have been mixed up. Let's see how you do. Okay, here we go. Stop. Hop, ah, clap. Hop, clap, walk. Hop, hop, clap, stop, clap, <laughs> walk, and give yourselves a round of applause. Awesome. Yay. All right. I'm just going through it uh, really quickly just to give you the idea. But the whole point here is that we are getting outside of our head. We are making mistakes. That is part of the process. Uh, we keep ourselves from being creative when we are too much of a perfection. So this is a primer to get us outside um, of all of that. Um, if you're facilitating it for a group, you can go a little bit longer just for demonstration purposes. I kept it pretty brief. So now that we're warmed up, our next activity is all about creative thinking and thinking outside of the box. So this is an activity uh, where I'm gonna show you an image. It's gonna be whoop, right here on the screen and it's gonna be an abstract image. And my advice to you is in the time that I have, uh, say as many things that it could be as possible. Um, these are called droodles and it's going to uh, look kind of um, weird. And what's gonna happen uh, as adults, we have this thing called functional fixedness syndrome in that once we see something, it's kind of hard to see it as something else. So you may find yourself stumped. My advice to you is if you cannot think of any weird things that this could be, imagine that you were five, six years old and you're playing this. How would your six-year-old version of yourself do it? That usually gets people outside of their little block. So here we go. First thing up oh, is on the side. So <laughs> what could this be? Just go ahead and shout it out loud. Keep going. It could be a parachute. It could be uh, snails uh, that just went through the sand. It could be wavy hair. It could be layers of lasagna. Go ahead. More things. More things. All right, as fast as you can. The goal here is to not uh, not think about it. Just first thing that comes to mind. A few more. Imagine you're doing amazing. All right, cool. So I got one more for you. One more of this, Drew, and then we're going to go to the last activity. Um, I'm going to not give you any hints. This is just going to be up. And for the amount of time that it's up, I want you to think of all the things that this could be. And again, if you get stuck, imagine that you are the six year version of yourself. How would that person answer? All right, and go. Keep going. A few more. Again, it's just abstract, so whatever you say is absolutely correct. Challenge yourself to be even more abstract. Again, there are no wrong answers here. 
All righty then. All right, cool. So yay, give yourself another round of applause. So we warmed up with uh, the walk, stop, hop, clap. Again, it just got us um, making mistakes and getting outside of our body, getting a little bit more focused. Now we're starting to get creative, thinking outside of the box, um, you know, with the droodles. Um, you can Google droodles, you can find them. This is something that I do on the regular. It's part of my daily practice of just staying creative. Now, this last activity um, is to help us think on our feet and be okay when things go awry. You know, if you think about facilitation and whatnot, um, you know, Murphy's Law, anything can happen, right? Uh, the slides uh, might not work right. Uh, the client in the last minute asks for something else, so you gotta pivot. So this is what this activity is all about, is, is just getting us in a low stakes environment, getting used to pivoting um, and changing uh, on the spot. And so this is called Monkey Wrench. And so what is gonna happen, I'm gonna invite you to tell me a true story. Just again, say it out loud, um, you know, if you're in a place where you can talk out loud or you can just say it in your head. Uh, but what's gonna happen is throughout the story, so you're probably not gonna finish, I'm just gonna give you a short amount of time to do this. But throughout uh, this time, I'm gonna say random, uh, I'm gonna throw out random objects. I might say something like toilet or fire station or, or tree or something like that. When you hear it, uh, you have to, as quickly as you can, incorporate that object into your story. Your story is going to go from true to completely wacky, uh, but do what you can to incorporate it and then get back on track um, and do the best that you can. Okay, it's called Monkey Wrench. And the point here is for you perfectionists and like, no, the story has to go this way. This is for you <laughs> to give you practice of, of just pivoting on the spot. So ready and go ahead and start your story now. Mushroom, the word is mushroom. Toilet paper, the word is toilet paper. Iced tea, the word is iced tea. Car, the word is car. Snake, the word is snake. Magic, the word is magic. Ice cream, the word is ice cream. Flower, the word is flower. And the last word, chicken. The word is chicken. All right. You can bring your story to an end, um, whether you finished it or not. This was Monkey Wrench. Um, and just think to yourself, reflect, how was that? Were you the type that it was easy? You heard those you heard those uh, words, you were easy, uh, easily able to incorporate it into um, your story and keep going. Awesome. If you had a challenge, no worries. Uh, it's, it's challenging enough to tell a story. And then now you have to remix your story with, with uh, other words. Now, the point here of doing this activity is, is not to get used to uh, lying or, or whatnot. We're just working the part of our brain that has to process new information and go with it. And so this is a fun, low stakes way of practicing that so that when the stakes are higher, when um, you know things are on the line and something out of the blue happens, you're able to assess the situation, make some changes, and go with the flow. And hopefully uh, do it with grace. Um, I like to you know, say we're like uh, ducks. On the surface, it looks like we're gliding through the water, but underneath, we're paddling like crazy. So those are my three activities. I hope that you enjoyed them. Um, I invite to you is that you practice them often um, so that you can be uh, as creative as you can. And if you enjoy them, incorporate them into your work. So that is all. 
thank you so much. And for those listening, how can, if anyone wants to learn more about you or your work, how do they find you? Yeah, if you found this interesting and you're curious, maybe you want to ask me questions about it or or just talk shop, um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, just Gary Ware, just, just uh, search for me, uh, shoot me a message, add me. I'm happy to connect with you. Or you can go to my website, breakthroughplay.com. Uh, shoot me a message there. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Yes. And uh, for anybody, if you'd like some more pattern breaking ideas, I do just have my book come out, Pattern Breaks, A Facilitator's Guide to Cultivating Creativity. And it has uh, some principles, practices, processes for facilitating creativity for a group and also more within yourself as a creative facilitator. So, and you could get that at patternbreaks.com or on Amazon or on other online retailers. So thank you so much, Gary Ware, and thank you all. And I'll see you the next video.